First of all, connect the inverter to your device via WLAN. This can be a smartphone, tablet, or as in this case, a laptop. The inverter with SMA and the serial number appears in the laptop's overview of network connections. Simply click Connect. A dialog field where you can enter the network key appears. This is printed on the type label. Alternatively, use the WPS function. In that case, you must tap on the inverter enclosure twice. Tapping twice activates the WPS function. Alternatively, you can use the password SMA12345 during the first 10 hours of operation or for the initial configuration. After the first 10 operating hours, simply enter the network key. I use the WPS function in this case because it's easier and I don't have to enter the long network key. This function is also available for smartphone use. For Android, this is called the WPS push button. When the blue LED on the inverter flashes, the WPS function is active. The network keys are then automatically exchanged between the inverter and the laptop. As soon as the connection with the inverter has been established, open the browser and enter the following IP address, 192.168.12.3. This IP address applies for all inverters with a local user interface. This is how you access the device's local user interface. Next, you have to log in via the entry screen. When logging in, you can choose between the following user groups, installer or user. You are also asked to assign a password. Please remember that your selected password is also the password for the entire PV system. So, if several inverters form part of the PV system, and if all of them are going to be registered in the Sunny portal as one system, you must use the same password for every inverter. You can see here that the password I have selected is not safe. So you should choose a better one than 12345. Entering the password must be repeated. Finally, click Login. When configuring the inverter for the first time after logging in, you can choose between a manual configuration a configuration via a configuration file, or via the installation assistant. Unfortunately, you can see this selection here because we have already commissioned the inverter. I recommend configuration via the installation assistant. You can always start the assistant via the little person in the top right of the menu bar, and that's exactly what I'm doing now. You can perform the configuration in a few steps here. You can find an explanation for every single configuration step on the right. For this reason, I won't go through each individual step in detail here. In step 2, you must set the date and time. Then click Save and Next. In the third step, select the country standard. The standard with which the inverter is delivered is the default standard. We have prepared several country data sets. Now I'll select the country standard for Australia. If an energy meter is integrated into the PV system, it is displayed here and can be configured as necessary. Step 5. Grid Management Services deals with configuring the necessary limit on the feed-in power. And in the sixth and final step, you receive a summary of the data you just entered. This summary can be exported as a file. All parameters can also be exported and saved as an HTML file. If you click Next, you'll receive an overview of your system. This is also the first thing to appear when you log in via the local user interface. Here you can see the status of the device and the current power. And if an energy meter is connected, the power consumption in the household is also displayed. In the bottom part, the power and consumption for a day, month, and year are displayed in graphs. In the menu item, Device Configuration, you can find the option of saving this configuration in a file. You can use this file if you have to commission several inverters for a PV system. With the configuration file, you can save yourself the bother of clicking through the installation assistant for every single device. If you click Home again, you see the view that always appears when you log in with the PV system data. 
You can log off by using the drop-down menu in the top right, hidden behind the little person. When logging out, you just have to remember that if you want to reconnect to the inverter and have used the password SMA12345 at the start, this is no longer valid. The network key SMA12345 is not valid after the initial configuration. This means that you have to connect again to the inverter via the WPS function by clicking twice. Alternatively, enter the network key. This is printed on the device's type label. The inverter has now been commissioned via the Intuitive Web Server. This is how to commission all SMA inverters via an interface with the local user interface.